Welcome back. Um, let, let me move uh, away from you and go no, to... No, he was saying to me, you need to finish up with him. Okay, I, I, I thought he landed before we went. No. Okay. In this, yes. In this yes. Yes. yes, I was saying that, you know, I mean, okay, I mean, if, yes, I, I think the electorate needs to be educated. I mean, if you, if you sell your, your, your vote, if you sell your future for, for money or for, for a bag of rice, I mean, how long will that last? Maybe three, four, five, six months? And then you endure the uh, negative effect, ne negative part of, of leadership for four years. I think we need to educate the electorate more on the dangers of you know, doing these kind of things um, before the election. Okay, so still on this inducement, what would be the rationale, for instance, behind the idea of a, a politician or an agent to a politician bringing money or things to induce the voters. What, what does this say, you know, in looking at the larger picture? It's, it's, it's a question of investment because, yeah, uh, we know that once you get into public office, your entire landscape changes. Your entire life changes. Look, if you are, if you are the manager of a bank branch, at Christmas, you get a ton of gifts, you know? Now, shortly after that Christmas, you are promoted beyond bank manager, branch bank manager status, to head office or something where you are now, you know, part of a team. The next Christmas, nothing. Now, everybody aspires to be a bank, a branch manager, and even struggle not to be promoted beyond branch manager <laughs> because of benef pecuniary benefits. These things are true to life. Now, the politician in our climb, not just in our climb, generally all over the world, once you get into public office, you have opened a door to a new vista of life. So anything I can do to get into that space, I'm ready to do it now in hope that I will win. If, if, your, if your aim is to come and serve the people, that if, 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 that is, if that is what you want to do, that doesn't happen why in must you... Why, no, why doesn't it happen? Because we haven't understood that leadership is about responsibility. Now, our local kings, chiefs, and all of all that, are the example of leadership that we have. And all they do is get, they don't give. I'll tell you a story. My father was uh, um, a visiting teacher way, 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 way back. And he visited this community where the, 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 the people said they didn't like the teachers. And he said, oh, really, why? Said these teachers don't give us corned beef and sardine like the Oyibo used to give us. Say they are very bad teachers. Don't worry, tomorrow morning I will take them away so that the teachers that you want will come. So in the morning, he came to him and said, uh, If you take these teachers away, who will teach our children? He said, Oh no, the ones that will give you sardine and corned beef are coming. They will teach your children. He said, no. But before they come, who will teach them? He said, Nobody will teach them. He said, Ah ah. You should be glad that these teachers are here to help improve your community. But you are expecting them to give you. So we, our leadership system has been built on taking from the people and not giving to the people. Our society, our community, are not given one and taking ten back. Well, I mean, it, so it's not. You are not even given. So our system is not built on developing our people and our communities. It is built on taking from an, our people and our communities. Which is why if you go to your village, the highest house, traditional house, is a bungalow. And the door, you must stoop to enter into the house. Why? Because they built only to the height that their hands could reach. They didn't put a ladder to build a regular door that you can walk into. These are the limitations that leadership 
failure of leadership. When leaders can't cast a vision, this is what happens because the man sees and all around him, the king gets everything. He gets the most beautiful wife, he gets the cars, he gets everything. The pastor is the same thing. The, you know, that's, that's the picture of leadership. So why do you expect to be different in politics? Okay, let me, let me, in, in, let me just tell us this story. You, you told the story of yes. your father, but let me tell the story of a young lawyer that I know. And in the last election, 2015, he wanted to go for a state assembly. Wanted to be like, so he used to play football with these boys and all that. All of them educated. And he shared the vision with them. And they said, no, go ahead. We are behind you. So when it was time, he went ahead to start his campaign and all of that, got the form, and basically went through the process. Time for campaign in that local area. He came and finished talking to his constituents and said, okay, this is it. This is what I want to do. You told me to go ahead. Now it's time. Mm -hmm. So I'm going. They said, okay. Where are we go ahead, we're behind go ahead. you. But when he was about to go, they said, hey, what's, the need for us? what's the need for us? Wow. I said, ah, but you guys told me to say, so we will not drink water. Mm -hmm. So he dropped 50,000 there. And, it's, and they, what, there's one of their spokesmen got up and said, you don't expect us to do this. I mean, this person came here and dropped 500,000 there, and you're giving us 50,000 there. So the this. question now is, Mr. Ojo, someone actually tweeted here. That's what reminded me. Um, Gina Lubem says, that you guys in the studio have gone above the poverty line and may not necessarily understand what a bag of rice means to the ordinary Nigerian. So should we stay at that level of a bag of rice or, or 500,000 naira and then allow people who do not know or who do not want <coughs> to serve to go into leadership? I think it still boils down to leadership. <laughs> <laughs> At different levels now. Leadership, not leaders. Not leaders. Not leaders. leaders. Yes. Leadership. Okay. Leadership. Okay. So leadership at, here being responsibility. Yes. At different levels. Recently, you heard of a state conducting, I mean, giving primary four questions to teachers. And you, or you knew what happened. You knew what is still happening and everything. All the noise generated. Beyond that, it shows to me that some leaders in some places are deliberately keeping their people uneducated for a purpose. Because the more the people know, the more questions they begin to ask, the more awareness they have. So all that you normally do to exploit them or to keep them below the poverty line you will no longer be able to sustain your hold to keeping them down. So the thing to do is to bring people who are not qualified to be their teachers to teach them, knowing fully well that they will even compound their, 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 their illiteracy. They will compound the problem. So that is just one. Number two is when you have a, a, a community like he has painted, where you know, poverty is also relative at several levels, different levels. At the level of voters, there is a particular state in which the governor is fond of romancing with Okada riders. Why? Because he knows that, ah, these ones, no problem. Give them 5,000 Naira today, they will kill for that 5,000 Naira. Whatever it tells them to do, they will do. Because at their level, of awareness. That is their thinking that 5,000 Naira is so much to them today that it can even determine whether they live or die. So the politicians, they, 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 most of them are exploiters. And I think most of them also go into this. They, actually, they see it as business investment. Like you said, they see politics as business, not as a, 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 a vehicle for service delivery. No. So when they go there, some of them even go to borrow money. You've heard of that before. They will go to bank, borrow money, and they will sell their properties in order to pay for, for nomination form for their political parties. 
That's where it stands. So the corruption is also in the, in the selection process. They, they, they pay. Then by the time they set up their, 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 their campaign machinery, like he has pointed out, those ones also want, they want to, they have to leave their job so that they can follow you to go and campaign. They need to eat. They need to drink water. Somebody has to be provision for that. Then from that, you go on to people you are actually going to campaign to. By the time you get them in some halls, say, yeah, this is what I intend to do. Ah, okay, thank you, thank you. Then they call you back. Kilo body. <laughs> what are you what are you dropping? So this thing is, is laced. It's not something that we can really tackle immediately. It's a social problem, it's economic problem, it's political so, problem. So it's also this? cultural problem. Are you saying there's no place of strength that even though a person is beaten down, is watered down because of poverty, there's no place of strength to be able to say, you know what, you did this four years ago. You came with salt, you came with rice. This time, I don't want your rice. I want this. We have had or seen uh, some viral video of where you see some politicians go to a certain place, village, and then they start, you know, we, we, of course we are not advocating for, for, for violence, but to be able to say, don't no come way. with this another time. I have something to say about that. You know, I, I think it, this poverty thing we're talking about, I think it's, it's a mindset. I mean, uh, someone just tweeted about, I mean, what the bag of rice means in the ordinary Nigerian. I think the Nigerian used to show rice. I think, for me, it's this, this election in Anambra is a test on how far we can go, even in, in 2019. I think Nigeria you should arise because, you see, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a mindset thing. Now, if we continue like this, how far can we go as a nation? We just keep going round in cycles because, I mean, there is no, you, you to breathe, you to continue breathing this kind of politics. Every, and the same story we'll be telling every time there's an election. Mm. I think it's a mindset thing which the Nigerian youths should arise and say, this enough is enough. The, the willpower to say no, to sell your vote, no matter how hungry you are. We understand, yes. And like you said, that's what the politicians do. They keep you impoverished. They keep you um, out of school. No information, no education, no training. So that there is always that power to mm. wield against you. Okay, Mr. Benitez, is it possible for, we're running up now, is it possible for us, for the electorate, I mean the Nigerian citizen, and when you say Nigerian youth should rise up, the youth will tell you, you're giving us too much responsibility. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it's a condition. They will just, I mean, on the social media, they will probably tell you who, 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 who leadership help. <laughs> you know, okay. this is the mentality of Nigerian youth. I think we should arise. I think it's the mentality of many Nigerians, not just the youth. But okay, <laughs> is it possible for the electorate and indeed the politicians not to see the election process as a mere ritual? Is it possible for them to get to that point where they see the election process as an opportunity for you to make a king? No. Oh, that's <laughs> heavy. <laughs> yeah. be, be, because leadership is about service. Service is about being prepared. If you are not, and being prepared means that you have identified what the challenge is that your service is going to address is. Now, if you haven't identified what the challenge is, you can't be prepared. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, it's sad that we are where we are, but Nigeria will not change till a man tells us that those that word that is just two letters, N O, no, is stronger than anything that anybody can offer us. Nigeria will not change. Wow. And the youth cannot arise until there is somebody to stand behind. And who is, that is why it is all, it starts and ends leadership. with leadership. Mm. It is about a man. And 2015 was about a man. And 2019 will be about a man. 
and a man yeah. being man or woman. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> yeah. 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 I understand. Somebody. Yeah. Somebody. So, Somebody. So we have to learn how to say no. Absolutely. N O no to certain things yeah. that are not going to bring development to us yes. that are going to impoverish us. Nothing is more powerful than those two. Than thank those thank two you so much for coming on this morning. We've been having a chat with um, three gentlemen, Ovie Benitier, a vo vocational training advocate. Thank you for coming. Olashukbo Ojo, a legal practitioner, and Ugo Otunye, who is also a lawyer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here. And we'll go on a quick break, and we'll be back with Janet.